<clears throat> now for me I like using things that aren't going to tear my lungs out so um, I, I use the 91% alcohol for most things if I'm not in a hurry this is just the Equate brand from from Walmart but you know any brand will do as long as it's the 91% isopropyl alcohol um, I'm just dip it in a vat of that leave it, leave it for a couple of days come back to it hit it with a brush a wire brush and the paint usually just comes right off but you know it takes a little while if you're in a hurry you can use any kind of stripper you want really uh, I like this stuff because uh, it, it isn't as uh, toxic to your, young, your lungs and uh, it doesn't make you know any the people in your house just want to jump out a window because it smells so bad and it works fairly fast um, it's not any less toxic uh, you're not really supposed to breathe it so use it in a well ventilated area but before we get to actual stripping and you can use whatever stripper you want you know, I don't care whatever you're whatever you're comfortable with darn near anything will take the paint off these they are the, the cab is enamel the plastic on here for the most part isn't harmed by strippers do not get any strippers in the headlight lenses whatsoever when I do these I always take a piece of real clay this is not this is not your play-doh this is real clay this is the stuff that never dries and I take a tiny tiny little piece maybe something about that size can you even see that there it is. Isn't that cute? Where'd it go? Can't even see it. Camera. There it is. <laughs> and I take a tiny little piece like that, and usually I have to divide it in half. If you don't have any dental instruments like these, I would strongly suggest if you want to model that you get them. Because to see if I tap this on here and pick that up, how small that is. But when I go to put it, doesn't help drop it on the floor either. But when I go to put it on the headlight, it'll be huge. See? Kind of big for what we want. So, I'm going to take it, just chop it in half, pick it up again, roll it. And just press it on there. So it stays on there. Now I've used this this piece on several models, so it's not going to stick real well to anything at all. See? See how well it doesn't work? Helps you warm it up a little bit in your fingers too sometimes. Yeah, you know, if you got something else, there's there's all kinds of fancy coatings you can use. Main thing is you want to cover the whole thing and you want to get something that you can take off later that isn't going to dissolve the headlight while you're working with it. I wouldn't recommend masking because masking is going to leave a nice big silver ring there. You just want to cover the whole thing. Leave your little silver ring around the edge. Something like that. And then you do the other one. Same thing. That piece was a little warmer so it went right on. This is an oil based clay but it is 100% non-toxic and, and not and it's harmless to the clear plastic. It won't discolor it, change it, or make it no longer clear. Now you can brush stripper on the lenses, if, or not the lenses, the headlights if you want, and all the chrome parts if you want to strip that off and off of here. If you're going to paint over it, I would recommend doing that because that chrome is notoriously difficult to keep covered and then all you need in the, in the camera shots of your beautiful model is to have a little flash like that of that chrome and it doesn't take much just a pin prick will do it anyway that's all there is to that i don't even bother usually with the with the fenders and all that but you can it's up to you now for the cab you got a couple of problems this stuff that plastic 
Do not get any solvent on that whatsoever. Don't even get any alcohol on it because if you get alcohol on it, it'll make it so that it is uh, like this. It's no longer clear. It's sort of translucent. So we're going to have to take that out and we got to take these things out because these little door handles always fall off when you put stripper on them. Eh, we can try the strippies. I've never done it with strippies. We'll try the strippies on it. But if you're going to soak it in alcohol, you want to take those off. And if you don't, they'll come off in the in the alcohol vat that you put them in. And uh, you'll have to go looking for them. So to get them off, if you want to, you just push them through this hole over here in the back here. We'll leave them on this time around. Maybe the uh, strippies will, will, will do it without uh, the citrus strip. Maybe it'll do it without, the, uh, without taking the glue off. Anyway, the biggest problem are the windows then, and this steering wheel. This thing always comes off, and they're really hard to find because they're black and they're tiny. So I always just push it through from, from, the, from behind. There may be some glue or something on it that'll break off, but they usually come right out. See? It is, can you see that? Doesn't show up very well in the picture, but... Right back here, there's a little push. You can just push that thing through. Pull it out. There she is. Set aside. Save it for later. Now the window glass is riveted on, and I've done this a number of ways. You can you can spend the time precision drill the rivets out if you want to, but it's just not worth it. Uh, the weakest link on here is the plastic, so let's just take the plastic off. And they have these little pins on the end of them. Can you see that? These little pins right here. I've done it where I've cut up here with, with, a, with a saw or a knife. But usually if you just you know, stick one of these, stick a fine, uh, fine blade or even a fine... Uh, screwdriver like this under there, you can snap this off. See? You see that? There, it's gone. Let's snap this one off. And we do it over here. Same thing. See if I can actually get it on camera. Just snapped that little pin off. And then, you should have some wiggle room. If not, it doesn't look like we do. Because these go in from the front. These windshields. Some of them run better than others. This one's in here really well. So we're going to snap the other side off. See that pin right there? If I can get it on the camera, it would be great. There it is. See that little pin right there? Who's going to snap that one off? So there's nothing there. See that? But don't worry, there's plenty here to hold it. Especially since we're going to glue it back in. Same thing over here. Snap that little pin off. Then she should flex. And you want to just push out from the bottom. See if we can get it over here. There we go. Can you see this at all? Just gonna push this out from the bottom. And it should oh, doesn't help you drop it on the floor. Don't worry, it's all metal. Not the floor, the truck. Okay. Yeah, that's how modelers get exercise. We drop stuff on the floor all the time. Usually they'll just pop right out. This one's in here really tight. They must have put an extra coat of yellow paint on it. Every one of these is different. So I'm going to put my screwdriver underneath the little tab here. And I'm just going to push up a little bit. So I can feel it wiggle. Same thing on the other tab. Just push up a little bit so I feel it wiggle.
There she goes. Probably didn't see that at all, but if you see that there, you see that tab? Now that's on there. And all I did was go in here and I pushed up on a little bit and it just comes right out. It was down here, like that. Just push up a little bit on it. As soon as that comes out, she falls right out. Nothing to it. Set this aside, put it someplace where it isn't going to get solvent dripped on it or sprayed on it or splashed on it. Wherever the hell that is for you. I've never found that place myself. I always get stuff on them. Anyway, same thing for the back window. You've got these these two little tabs. Can you even see that? There we go. That's all it's holding on. Really hard to do this working around the camera. You'll have a much easier time. See that right there? The little tab. Just get underneath it, snap it off. These are pretty thick sometimes in the back. Don't know why. Just had extra plastic for the back end. Sounds like a personal problem to me. Yeah, this one doesn't want to come out. And there we go. Once you get her cracking, the rest is uphill all the way. No, down. <laughs> there we go. Knock that one right off. That's it. it ran over here to the corner. It's afraid of me. There it is. The big old guy with a screwdriver. Yeah, there it is. And you may not have to even knock this one off. You just tap the back window a little bit. That's not quite loose enough for me. So we'll push this one out a little bit. Usually that's all it takes, and the whole thing comes out. Once again, set it aside someplace where hopefully nothing will splash on it. That's it, you're ready to go. You apply your stripper to the. Uh, I just brush it on if I use the uh, citrus strip. You don't need a lot of it. If you want to see how we do it, why not? I always shake this stuff up. I just use the cap. You can put it in whatever you like. Take a crappy old brush. This stuff is water soluble too, so. And you're gonna get it on your hands. If you don't want it on your hands, you're gonna want to wear gloves. And I always just put a, a thin coat. Wouldn't take much. Do the doors first if you want. And pop it open. Do the inside of the frame. Kind of like painting in reverse with big giant chunks of goo. Same thing on this side. You can hardly even see it. Sorry about the jet noise. We're coming back. Blowing things up. And pop the door open. If you can still hear me. And do the inside. Frame. Generally, you only need about a cap full to do this whole thing. And we're gonna do the back. I got it on my finger. I'm dissolving. I'm dissolving. I'm kidding. This stuff's harmless. You don't want to eat it though. It tastes awful. Uh, there we go. And uh, if you want to do the inside, you can do the inside. Um, I don't always. Sometimes I do. I mean, nobody's gonna see it. It's Got so much junk inside once the model's put together that you're not going to really see it that well. Up to you. And set it down and we'll do the roof. That's pretty much it for that. For the cab. And we'll put a little bit around the uh, headlights. The uh, headlight area, get some of that silver off. You have to get it all off. Mainly just want to get that shiny finish out, but that's what really 
Do the fenders with the hell right here. And you can take all this apart too and do it if you want to, but you know, why bother? Just have to put it all back together again. There you go. Set that aside. And uh, come back a little bit. And we'll see what's appealing. Okay, let's see how we're doing. I literally stepped away from this for not even a couple of minutes. And you can already see where it is peeling off the inside. Right here. It's eating it right off. And starting around the edges of the door. And the Ford Service logo is pretty much coming off. The rest of it's going to take maybe another five minutes. It usually takes this stuff because you don't know how many times they painted these trucks. Sometimes when they're cracked like this they probably got several coats of paint on them. And uh, then there's a clear coat on top of that. Uh, so uh, this one may take eh, maybe another five minutes before it uh, starts to I mean if you want to work it if you want to just get your your uh, your file out and you know, do something there you can but I'll let the stuff do the work I'm not in a big hurry so or you can put a little more more on it'll do the same thing um, it doesn't really work it's not the fastest stripper in the world but it works well so we'll give it another five ten minutes and see where we're at Now, before we do that, let's take a look at the silver on the headlights. You can see the silver on the headlights is already not shiny anymore. And if I pull a little scratch mark on it, you can see it's, it's coming off. These are black underneath, by the way. They're not always black. Some of them are blue. Depends on what plastic they had available that day. It was working well. Anyway, we'll come back in another five minutes and see where it's at. Okay. I have to admit I went back through and did another uh, application of the stripper uh, mainly on the cab and you can see um, how it came out. This is after uh, you know, a second coat of the stripper on some of the places that were kind of tough to get it off. And uh, you don't have to get it all off but fortunately this all came off and this truck was painted Oh, probably four times. It was white first, and then green, and then black, and then yellow. Um, and you're going to find this with all these models that they've been really through hell, some of them. Because they get built all over the world, and put together all over the world, and parts get repainted. Uh, one nice thing, when the stripper worked on the fenders here, it uh, loosened the glue on these lights, and they just fell off, which is kind of nice. Never had that happen before. And the, even though they had the, the little red pieces of clay on there, the lenses also loosened up enough, and I've never had these come out in one piece like that. So you might get lucky every now and then uh, and have something like that happen. Especially with this truck, because it, it was a pain to get all the paint off of it. This, you can see how the wheels were white, and apparently somebody painted them at the factory for some reason they had painted them gold first and then white and then uh, the silver uh, at least they weren't green but you know some of these get painted over and over and over again I don't know why but it just happens because they're toys and we did the radiator like I said you don't have to get all of it off just want to get most of it off of there you never get it all off and the same thing on the hood Hood turned out pretty good. Anyway, now we gotta talk about paint. Um, I usually like to make them a couple of colors. Um, really all we want is to get some primer on this thing so that we can add whatever, whatever paint we want. Now I do a combination of things with paint. I do, uh, sometimes I do um, spray paints, usually for the primers. 
and occasionally if I want to add another color sometimes I'll, I'll you know just use uh, tape and mask it off and paint two colors or recently I've just been dry brushing or just soft brushing with thin thin coats of paint uh, to add my colors it's up to you whatever you prefer it all gets zapped with uh, some uh, flat acrylic paint anyway at the end clear flat acrylic paint at the end so it all sticks on there for good but you want to pick at least a couple of colors I would say uh, something you want your frame to be um, I think this is probably just going to get gray primered at first and then I'll pick my two col my, my colors for the frame um, not the frame but my colors for the fenders and then then maybe the frame um, and then you're going to want your you know, your, your cab and your hood and your radiator to be and your tire or your wheels to be a uh, different color uh, or however you want but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and primer this I don't use expensive paints um, stuff I use is just you don't want the absolute cheapest stuff because the sprayers are usually no good but I use uh, I used to use Krylon's uh, paints in the bat in the past and Krylon's gone to this Max brand as well. Uh, that works good. Uh, Rust-Oleum works fairly well, although sometimes you get some flaring and some big chunks out of the out of their nozzles because their paint just reeks uh, forever. It never seems the the scent from that is just relentless. Um, but yeah, I would say the the Krylon Max is a good one uh, to go with. Uh, their older paints were better and their sprayers were better, but that's just the way it is. Um, and I've used the model paints as well, the testers paints, then the model classics paints. Um, really expensive paint. Goes on extraordinarily well, but I'm not sure it's worth the price. Because when you weather it out, it doesn't really look that different. The only time I ever use the expensive little teeny cans from testers is if I want, uh, if I have, if I think I'm going to have trouble with something adhering, because that stuff seems to stick to anything. Um, and airbrushing, you can do airbrushing if you like. Uh, I find airbrushing to be just a giant pain because you, it's, you know, two minutes of painting uh, costs you about two and a half hours of, of prep work and clean up afterwards. So I don't, I just don't think that's worth, it's worth that much time for just a truck that's going to sit on your layout. Anyway, I'm going to get this primered up and we'll come back and you can take a look at it.